In the previous video, we learned three summation formulas, and now we're going to learn two, two more properties of sums that will, when we combine the three summation formulas with these two properties, we'll have a really powerful toolkit for um, finding this uh, more complex sums. Okay, so here this first property says that if we have a constant times our summation term, then actually we can just do the sum, the sum with the summation term and multiply with the constant afterwards. So to really understand this, let's get an example. Oops. So suppose we had the sum as i goes from 1 to, let's say, 10 of 5i. Well, here we have a constant times a summation term, which is exactly what our formula has in it, our rule here. It's a constant times a term. And so the formula says we can pull that constant out and just do the sum of the term. So what that looks like is this. It looks like 5 times the sum as i goes from 1 to 10 of i. Now in the previous video we learned this exact formula and I'll, I'll write it down just to remind you. There's a formula that says we can do the sum from i from 1 to n of i and this is n times n plus 1 over 2. And I'm doing this quickly because we learned this in a previous video but that's just a quick reminder. So this says now we can do 5 times that sum which I'll put in brackets, that sum is just n, which is 10, times 10 plus 1 over 2. So 5 times this. And if we work this out, this is going to be 5 times 55, which is what? It's 275. Okay. So so what we did was, if you, if you notice, the problem we started with here, we don't actually have an explicit formula for. Right? We don't have an explicit formula for this summation. But we, what we did was we pulled the 5 out, we pulled that constant out, and then what we were left with was something with an explicit formula. We had... Uh, this formula for that sum. And then we just used the formula, plug 10 in, 10 times 10 plus 1 over 2, and simplified those numbers. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and uh, that, that's an example for the first property. Let's go ahead and look at the second property. So here it says if we're adding up two different terms at the same time, instead we can just sum each term individually. So let's look at an example of that. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so how about we have the sum as i goes from 1 to n of i plus 7. Okay, well now we don't have a formula, a direct formula for this. But we do have the addition of two terms inside the sum. So our, our property 2 here tells us we can break this into two different sums. The sum as i goes from 1 to n of i plus the sum as i goes from 1 to n of 7. And now we do have explicit formulas for this. So here this is, I guess I'll just for now call this formula A. And we also have formula B, which says that the sum of a constant, in this case 7 is just a constant, the sum of a constant is just n times that constant. So we have these two formulas, so we'll use them both. Um, and in fact, you know, I kind of did something silly here. Let's not call this n, let's make this something concrete. Let's do this problem uh, up to 100. 
Okay, so the formula for the first piece is formula A. That's just going to be 100 times 101 over 2. Plus, the formula for the second piece is 100 times 7. So that's formula B. That's just 100 times 7. So just so we're totally clear, we use formula B for this part because we're just summing a constant. And we used formula A for this part because we're summing up I. Okay, and now this is 5,050 plus 700, which is just 5,750. Okay, great. So in the next video, we'll see, uh, we'll just do more examples of using the, this rule number one and two combined with the formulas that we've already learned to break down more complicated sums, things like this, into easier to manage uh, smaller pieces where we have formulas for them. Okay, see you in the next video.